is Christianity a book-dependent religion? And is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints a revealed religion? Welcome to People with a Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content related to cults and how to share the gospel with them. And before we get into today's topic, I want to give a shout out that's been long overdue. Uh, our new, new YouTube subscribers, Mark Henry, Jeanette Burns, Edward Farrell, True Feelings Productions, Linda Harding, Gregory Blood, Bryson Townsend, and Word Word. Um, and those are just the ones who show their subscriptions public. So if you didn't hear your name, you recently subscribed, go ahead and change that and it'll probably show up. And if not, just give me a shout out or a comment and I'll give you a shout out as well. New Facebook likes, Sharon K. George, Trent Patterson, Lane Meyer, and Kimberly Martin Freeman. And of course, you can find us over on Facebook at facebook.com slash people of the free gift. So let's go ahead and jump into today's topic. Adam Berkey on Facebook wrote this. He says um, he was commenting to something I wrote, Adam H. Berkey, that is easy to state, harder to back up, could not the same be said of you. In relation to a conversation we had previously, he said, actually, no, it cannot. The strength of the saints' claims comes from the paradigm of the nature of our religion. We are a revealed religion, not a scripture-dependent religion. If the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is not the true church, then there is no true church on the earth today. What compels one to investigate the church is the availability of the organization and authority of the Lord. That cannot be found in any other organization than the church because the paradigm of scripture-dependent religion has removed the structure and authority of God from itself and has replaced it with mob rule religion, as in the Catholic Church, or superstitious concepts that bind men down to the Bible only, Protestants or biblical fraud Christianity. Jason wrote, give me an example of something you have realized you were wrong in and have changed. I used to argue, as I have found many saints still do, that works were required for salvation. It was a Christian from YouTube that compelled me to consider what I had not been considering. I no longer believe as I used to, although it has not been made the Christian any less wrong, he motivated me to consider what I had not been considering so that my position became more perfected. And the same individual wrote in another post, The God of the Bible is a concoction of the biblical fraud Christian world. It dictates that God cannot exist outside of the Bible. Whether former day saints or latter day saints, the saints have never worshipped the God of the Bible. The God of the saints is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the Holy One of Israel. He is the living God, revealing his will to his living prophets who are of the house of Israel. God covenanted with Abraham that his seed would bless the nations of the earth, and that covenant is still kept between the Holy One of Israel and his people, the saints. The God of the Bible is the God of idols. The Bible is the idol of the God of the Bible. Essentially, with this tradition, without the Bible, there can be no God. All things are centered around the Bible, which literally has become the God of biblical fraud Christianity. What has been revealed to the saints regarding truths that are independent to the plan of salvation, such as concepts of where gods began to be, do not detract from the revelations that have been recorded by the prophets and apostles of the Holy One of Israel. What this man in the video, I'm assuming the man is you, Jason, what he is trying to do is alienate the saints from the words of their prophets and apostles by using the Bible, which is of itself not correctly representing the doctrines of the saints in all dispensations, by hijacking the Bible as if it was an impeccable and infallible representation of the ancient prophets and apostles, men like in this video zealously try to separate the teachings of the living prophets and apostles from the written testimonies of previous prophets and apostles found in what he, this man, preaches as the word of God. All it takes is a mob rule established by the learning of men that declares what is genuine or not. But since when has God employed the learning of men to establish his authority and declare what is God's work so there's a lot that has been said in that, but I just wanted to respond with this. 
One, Christianity is not a book-centered religion or scripture-centered religion. Yes, we believe that the Bible is the sole rule and authority for uh, doctrine and practice. And that is something called sola scriptura, and it was popularized during the time of the Reformation by men like Martin Luther. And that is not to say that the Holy Ghost cannot speak to us personally. It is not to say that uh, we, we cannot have other believers give, speak wisdom into our lives. It's not to say that God does not still reveal himself through nature or his uh, you know, natural creation. But it is to say that if somebody were to claim to speak for God and it contradicted the words of his previously revealed words in the Bible, then we would be abound to what God has revealed about himself previously in the scripture. And so that brings me to the point that says that Christianity is not a Bible, scripture, or book-centered religion. Because how, you have to ask yourself, how did the Bible come to be? It wasn't men who sat around in a council, mob rule, and decided what they thought God was like and what his plan of salvation would in, involve and answer the deepest questions of, of, of life. That's what you call philosophy, but that's not what you find in the Bible. The Bible says of itself that all scripture is God-breathed, meaning that it had its origin in that. The Apostle Peter tells us that holy men of God were moved by the Holy Spirit. And that word moved is important because it's used also when Paul is caught in a storm when he's on a ship headed to Rome. And it shows that the captain of the ship is trying his best to steer the ship, but it's being steered by the superior force. That's that word moved. It is men who are being moved and steered by God and his spirit. That, and you refer to them as the apostles and the prophets. And that's exactly what we believe the Bible to be. We believe that holy men of God moved by the Holy Spirit, were able to write with their, in their style, representing their culture, their language, and who they were as individuals, but they were reflecting exactly what God wanted to communicate through them. And so there's many times in which through prophecy or revelations of scientific nature or insights into events that nobody was there to witness, that they supernaturally knew that information that they wouldn't have known otherwise apart from God. So that is what we believe the Bible to be. We believe it to be God's revealed word to us through his holy prophets. Now, let's get back to the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price. You say that Mormonism is not a Bible or scripture or book-centered religion. It is a revealed religion. Well, I just showed you that Christianity itself is a revealed religion, that that's exactly how we got the Bible in our possession. But let's take a look at Joseph Smith and his uh, first vision, I'm just going to call it that because for most of the history of the church, that's exactly what people knew to be the first vision, was his encounter with the angel Moroni. And Moroni tells him, I'm going to show you where these buried golden plates are, which he then translates by the gift and power of God, according to Mormonism, and they become the Book of Mormon, which is telling the accounts of other apostles and prophets who came over from the Holy Land, over to the Americas, and then eventually you have an encounter with the resurrected Jesus. And so you have uh, holy apostles and prophets who have the word of God revealed to them, and then Joseph Smith 
as an angel show him where these pro these plates lay and then he translates them by the gift and power of God and then you have him receiving revelations and that becomes written down in the doctrine and covenants and that becomes your scripture and then you have this pearl of great price which has you know the articles of faith it has Joseph Smith's history and it also has these Egyptian artifacts which uh, the church purchased and Joseph claimed were the, the words of Abraham and Joseph and, and Moses and things like that. And so he translates them again by the gift and power of God and they become scripture. And so my question to you now is if a current prophet or apostle of the church claims to have a revelation that goes that went against something that was previously revealed in your scriptures would you just go with the prophet and what would that mean for you what would that mean for your religion are you in fact both what we claim to be a revealed religion that then gets written down and then that written version becomes for the most part, what we study, what we preach, what we live by. And that's exactly, we, we're on the same page with that. The, the, the way that we differ is that you guys say we have to have a living prophet on the earth. And we would say, yes, we are in agreement with you, but Jesus is that living prophet. And he's given us the Holy Spirit, and he can lead us directly. And as far as scripture goes, it says that all scripture is God-breathed, and it is useful for teaching, rebuking, and training, and correcting the righteousness, so that the man or woman of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That means that we do not have need of other scripture. It says that we have been blessed with all every, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. It says that we've been given everything pertaining to life and godliness, that we've been made partakers of the divine nature. And so there is nothing more that we need. Jesus is able to, is more than enough to pay for our sins and to bless us with everything and equip us for everything that we need to do. So that's where we differ in that. And we also differ in the reasons why we believe that the, the, our, our scripture is actually revealed scripture. You see, the Bible, it, it can be backed up historically, it can be backed up scientifically, prophetically, and in, in the unity as a whole, there's no contradictions or fallacies. And that, that is not true of the Book of Mormon. That is not true of the Doctrine and Covenants. That is not true of the Pearl of Great Price. The Pearl of Great Price it was actually translated from the Egyptian funerary book of the dead. And he, Joseph Smith claimed that it was written by Abraham's own hand. And yet not one Egyptologist has a, a, a verified any single word within that document. Okay, uh, Reformed Egyptian is not a, a known language. It didn't exist. Uh, we still have no evidence. We have no archaeological evidence. We have no historical evidence. We have no scientific evidence. Your scholars cannot even agree on where the events in the Book of Mormon took place. Okay, you have no evidence that it is an ancient book of any kind, and therefore you cannot prove that there is prophecy of any kind. And therefore you cannot prove that there is any reason to believe that it is from human, or divine origin other than your claim that you, you prayed about it and God revealed to you through a feeling which is completely emotion-driven, which is an element of mind control, that has been practiced on you. There is no, there is no objective way of measuring why somebody can pray that that prayer and get a negative answer, like I have earlier in my life, or a person who prays that prayer and gets a positive answer. There's no way to verify the claims of the Book of Mormon. There's no way to verify that experience and what the significance of that experience is. And why there's others who have had that very experience 
who are part of the splinter groups that broke off from the mainstream uh, LDS church. And that experience is common to other religions as well. So I want to know what you have to say in response. And so if you have insights or questions about something that I said that I did not talk about, please put those in the comments down below. I'll be taking some of those for the weekly Q&A, and I try and respond to every single comment that comes my way. And so if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up on the video if you like the content for the day. Share this video with others who are interested in cults and how to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.